This is the 60th episode of Patterson in Pursuit. It's my conversation with Pra Maha Shanam Kam Prakai, a Buddhist monk in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another special episode of Patterson in Pursuit. Last month, I was in Thailand trying to learn about the basics of Thai Buddhism. It was an interesting time in Thailand. I wound up getting lost at a couple of Buddhist temples. I got food poisoning, as is so common in Thailand. But fortunately, not all my efforts were in vain. I did get to have some great conversations. This one you're about to listen to came from the Wat Chedi Luang, which is known as the Temple of the Great Stupa. This interview, we're talking about the thing that I always talk about with everybody, the basics. What's the purpose of meditation? Are there different types of meditation? Does Thai Buddhism offer insights into the nature of the mind? What about the nature of the self? After the conversations I had with the monks in Thailand and with Keiho Nishigaki in Japan, I decided, you know, I'm going to take up this meditation thing. Just over the past couple of weeks, I've been practicing a bit of meditation. So far, so good. I'm actually very pleased with the results of daily meditation. I'll tell you guys more about that later. Before I start the interview, let me tell you about the sponsor of this episode, Praxis. If you guys have been following the news, you know that right now there are a bunch of crazy crusades taking place on American campuses. It seems like many students and faculty and administration have completely lost their minds. This is resulting in the credibility and prestige of academia imploding. It's probably well overdue for that. But up until fairly recently, there's not been an alternative to the academic system. We've all been taught that in order to be successful, in order to get a job, you have to first get a degree. But fortunately, things have changed. The company Praxis is all about bypassing the archaic and overpriced academic system. It's about taking people who are interested in creating value in the real world, giving them three months of professional training that is immediately followed by six months of a paid apprenticeship in the real world right away. Plus, after you complete their program, they contractually guarantee you a job offer. And right now, the average Praxis salary after graduation is $50,000 a year. It's a totally superior product. I couldn't more highly recommend it. So if you're interested, if that sounds like something that resonates with you, go to steve-patterson.com slash Praxis, P-R-A-X-I-S. All right, so I hope you enjoy my conversation about Thai Buddhism with Pra Maha Shanam Kam Prakai. Now, fair warning about this interview. You might ask, Steve, why does it sound like you guys are talking into a 1950s radio through two tin cans? And the answer is because there was a bird outside the window next to us in the interview that was chirping every, oh, five seconds or so. It had a very loud and obnoxious squeal. So in order to get this episode to the point where I could even listen to it, I had to do some audio finagling. So while you're listening, just make up a story, and let's say this took place in a dangerous jungle, and I could only carry along an old cassette player to record the conversation. Of course, that's not true at all, but it'll just help you adjust to the audio quality a little quicker. First of all, I want to thank you for sitting down and <laughs> speaking with me. <laughs> I know I kind of sprung the interview on you, but um, this is a great opportunity for a Westerner to be able to talk with practicing Buddhist monks about some really some of the basic questions in your worldview and what you're accomplishing here um, being a monk in your training. Mm. So where I want to start is this area of meditation. So I had a conversation the other day with a, another um, gentleman here and I had a conversation when I was in Japan with a Zen Buddhist and both of them were saying that meditation is really central to Buddhism in general and to like the daily life of a, of a practicing monk. So for meditation, what is the purpose? I guess it's a good place to start. What is the purpose of meditation? Um, the purpose of meditation is to get rid of, um, you know, uh, the the emotion to get rid of the emotion mm. and also to understand the emotion mm. so this is the purpose of the meditation but it depends on what meditation we are practicing 
because there are two main kind of meditation that we can practice. Mm. So each meditation also can lead into uh, they 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 have they have their own purpose for meditation. For example, mm. when when we practice the focus meditation, the result is calmness. Mm. If you want to be calm, you want do you don't want to do uh, we we don't want our mind buzzing mm. or we want to be calm or we want to be more focused on something. For example, if we have so many problems with you know thinking I, I cannot stop thinking mm. so we can go to focus meditation it might it, it, it can help us to to be more focused mm. so and another kind is about uh, mindful meditation mm. so uh, mindful meditation is about we 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 try to put awareness on our feelings thought and sensation mm. this is the main uh, goal of meditation at the end, we understand our feeling hmm. and accept our feeling. Hmm. Yeah. So, for for the first type of meditation, the focus meditation, how is that different in terms of what you do? Do you do you do you deliberately try to focus on one thing when you're sitting? Is this a yeah. moving meditation? Yeah. Um, uh, there are forty techniques hmm. uh, uh, for focus meditation. Um, you know, it depends on our nature, nature of mind. Mm. Um, how do we know our nature of mind? So sometimes it's we need to practice for uh, for three days, and then the teacher will can can recognize or can um, can um, give an advice to us. Mm. So we can know that. So basically, when you when you get into the temple, you will see monk chanting. Mm. So that also one kind of meditation. Mm. Um, you know, you, you you need mantra, you need chanting, and then you say it, and then your mind uh, focus on one 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 particular thing. That is mm. focused meditation. Okay. And also another kind is that okay, when you're breathing in and breathing out, you observe your breathing in and breathing out form form. You you feeling the the air that touching your 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 nose and then you know go down into your lung mm -hmm. and then you feel that when it when it come out mm -hmm. that's also one kind of meditation mm. so even though we're feeling something you know we don't we don't go to those kind of feeling it's it's like a replace our thought no you know, replace uh those those thought that we consider is you know, it's worrying or, you know, we think a lot. Mm. You replace it with something. Mm. So for example, we can count two. For example, I can count one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then come back. One, two, three. Mm. This is also one kind of meditation, focus meditation. Mm. We just focus. We don't care what we hear, we don't care what we see, we don't care whatever happening around around. We just, you know, when you walk, you just, you know, left, right, left, light. You, mm. know? you don't care anything before you, behind you, the past, the future, you don't care about it. But you hear with your step, mm. left and right. Mm. This is focused meditation. You don't care anything all around you. Okay. Yeah. So the focus meditation is focusing on the one thing, whatever it is, whether it's counting or walking. Yeah. And this is different from the other type of meditation, yeah. which is where you're not focusing on one thing, you're just focusing on your feelings as they, yeah. they focus, arise. Uh, mindful meditation is all about, you know, it's like, it, it's like a moving meditation. Hmm. You know, it, it's all about, you know, whatever you're hearing or you see and obvious, you know, your mind, um, your attention go to whatever. For example, now you are hearing, now you are feeling some some pain. Mm. You know, you might feel so many things at one time. Mm -hmm. But whatever obvious, you know, you can go to that mm. and observe it. So it's Obs not, it's not yeah. focusing; it's just observing. Observing, yeah, just observe. Mm. Let it let it work. Don't try to mend it. Don't try to do anything with it. Just observing. It's like a watching television or it's like a watching movie. Mm. You don't try to do anything. You just okay. Mm. You just 
you just watch it. Mm. You know, let it work. Okay. And let it, let it. You know, we observe the birth of feeling, mm. the appearance, uh, the uh, what is it? The du- duration mm-hmm. of the feeling and the disappearing mm. of the feeling. Whatever happening, for example, pain. Okay, now I I feel pain on my leg. Now you 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 feel it more than hearing or more than seeing. Mm. So you go into that, and then you observe the birth of <laughs> that. And then okay, now okay, I feel pain. So and then you 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 observe duration uh, du- duration how how it works mm-hmm. until it disappears. And then it let it go. Mm. So in another one, you can go to another thing. For example, uh, you know, sometimes we don't know, we we don't we we don't aware anything that we are doing. We just let it work mm. as we as usual as we as we um, you know how can I say, as we um, as we as we you know like a normal day, we just wake up and do everything. Mm-hmm. But we never observe our our. Our muscle, our feeling. Mm. So sometimes we get, we 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 are very tense on our shoulder. We 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 get a backache, headache. Mm-hmm. So and then we never observe it. So when you observe your mind and observe your body, you can release the pain too. Mm. And when you know the pain, and then. Uh, Sometimes when you think a lot and then you you feel like a tense on your on your muscle, mm-hmm. and then you don't know you just oh I want to take a medicine. So and then you take medicine. Okay, you release your pain. But instead of taking medicine, you can use meditation technique to release the pain too. Mm. When you have a tense, you 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 read you even reading a book is a good thing. But when you read a lot, you can have a you know I. Aches and you 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 very hot with your eyes and so, and it connect to your your brain. When it come to 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 eye, hot, and you can feel like very tense on your on your head. Mm-hmm. And when you observe and then you close your eyes and you observe, wow! Now, the muscle in my brain is very tense, very tight. Mm-hmm. So I want to observe and I want to release it. Okay, now you just okay. Now it's. Wow, this ten, and then you try to release it. It release, hmm. and and then you can be, uh, you know, normal, you know, normal state again. Hmm. Yeah. So, would it be fair to say that the focus meditation is about maybe calming your mind? Hmm. But there's lots of different things going on, so you just choose one thing yeah. and then you focus on that. Yeah. The mindful meditation is about being aware of what's going on in your body with the purpose of getting back to a state of calmness and relaxation. So yeah. what, what is, yes. that's what the purpose yes. of the mindful yes. meditation is. Okay. Yes. So you said before with the, the headache example, this is very relevant for me because I deal with eye pain. It goes from my neck yeah. to my eye. So if I observe it and I just think, okay, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just going to be aware of it, how do you make that transition from this is where the pain is to this is how I relax that part because I don't know how to relax if okay. my, my neck's really tight. We, we have to accept that the pain is, is, is also one, one kind of effect that we, that, uh, that we, that because of our behavior, mm. we, 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 read, we read a lot or we, we, we use our, our brain, our eye a lot. So, but, the the thing that we that we cannot stop doing it because of some time. Okay, the boss tell that okay, you have to finish uh, in one hour. Right. Even though you are very tired, you cannot. You you have to go beyond your uh, your ability. So and then when you go beyond your ability, the effect is that you know you get pain when you do exercise. Yeah. So if you do you know normal exercise is no problem. But if you increase the weight, you can get pain. Mm-hmm. And also the same thing. That we do in our life, when we, um, you know, increase the number of, you know, usually we we we, we have to sleep like six hour or eight hour, but we sleep just only two. No, that is the effects of our behavior. Mm-hmm. 
So to make to bring it back, there are two two ways that you can do. Okay, you 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 have to be back in the same habit that you 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 don't go to to the limit. Mm. So if you if you if you have that that problem, for example, get a headache and eye aches. Okay, you can stop what you did, what you do. Okay. So. Yeah. So in that okay, moment, right. yeah. In that moment, when I've got the the headache, is there a way? Are you saying there's a way with meditation to relax your muscles yeah. at that time? Yeah, you can do. You can close your eye. Yeah. Breathing d- d- deep breath. Yeah, breathe a deep deep breath. You know, and breathing in and breathing out for five times, just only five times. Mm. You can feel the relaxation. Mm. When you're breathing, or do you focus on? Do you, are you observing the pain while you're doing the breathing, or do you just focus on the breathing? It depends. It depends. Okay. You can you can you can observe your 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 breathing in and breathing out, mm. or you you can just you you just okay breathing in and breathing out, and then you don't focus on breathing and breathing out, and then you just go to to here. Mm. Now I want to relax. Okay, for example, you know I don't know I don't know my 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 uh, my shoulder is very tense. Mm. Okay. I don't know if when 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 it comes to I want to check from here to my feet. Mm. Okay, from 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 my head. Okay, now, okay. What about my eye? Is it tense? Am I am I am I meant something? I try to do something with my body <laughs> or not? Now, if you try to do, you make it into the normal level of your eye. You don't you don't try to close your eye. You don't try to open your eye. You just okay. If you say that okay, now I close my eye. You just close. Not try to close. Just close it. Just make everything just normal state. Mm. You don't try to. Okay, your head. Now it's very ten t- tight. You just okay. Now I release it, and then come to here and release it. And you you come and you observe for for two or three time or five time until you feel that oh now I'm I'm okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So putting this maybe in a bigger context, you said at the beginning that part of the goal of meditation is to get rid of emotions or to move, move past emotions or have them quiet down on their own. Mm. In the broader context of the Buddhist worldview, mm. is that part of the goal of practicing Buddhism in general, not just the meditation, but the whole? The whole philosophy together. What is it about? Is it about um, to liberate yeah. ourselves? To liberate. To liberate ourselves mm. from from suffering. Mm. You know, as a, as a human being, we we born with imperfection. Actually, uh, so we need to understand those kind of uh, no no suffering. For example, body suffering and mind suffering. So Buddha said that okay. Um, we we can we we can say that ah oh, I'm 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 healthy, I, I have a healthy body. For ten years I I haven't sick for ten years or twenty years, but would I say that with your mind? Every single moment, you got suffer with your mind. Hmm. So to treat those kind of suffer. You need to practice. You need to train your mind. Mm. It's our mind trainable. You can be trained. You can be trained. Mm. Um, you know until you make it habit, and mm. then it become you, you, your body and your mind are together. Not you know not the, the con- not not have conflict each other. For example, some some um, so uh, okay. I have to go back into your question. Mm. What is the main purpose of Buddhism in general? Mm. So. Buddha said that okay, uh, we need to go into uh, get enlightened, nirvana. Okay, we can say nirvana. What is nirvana? Nirvana means we understand the reality. We get enlightened. We enlightened person. Mm. What what is enlightened person? Enlightened person means they their mind. You know. Can go higher than than uh, happiness and unhappiness. Hmm. So those 
those people still have uh, suffering, still have um, happiness and, and unhappiness, but those happiness and unhappiness cannot do anything with them. Hmm. They can lead happiness. They can lead suffering. Not let suffering and happiness, you know, push them around. And is the way that they attain that mental state yes. through the practice of meditation pretty yeah. much exclusively, or is it about understanding the philosophy and the mental stuff? It's just entirely the, mm. really it, the practice. It, it, it's a matter of practice. Mm. Without practice, we cannot understand Buddha teaching. Mm. We cannot understand Buddha teaching by reading the book. Mm-hmm. We are practicing, we can understand it. Okay, mm. some people can understand Buddha teaching too by, you know, you can read, but when you read, you cannot uh, understand right away. You have to come with yourself and practice. Mm. And then when you truly understand with your own experience, that is the true understanding that Buddha said, okay, you are enlightened because you truly understand uh, by yourself. So would you say that it would be impossible to separate the philosophy teachings and the books of Buddhism? It would be impossible to separate the the core of Buddhism from meditation? No. So so it's absolutely central. It's not really a philosophy. It's almost like the meditation maybe comes first Mm -hmm. and then the explanation of what's going on with the meditation. Is that fair? Uh, uh, you, you can you can two way around. Mm. You can start with meditation first, and then come to uh, theory, and you come to theory and go practice. Mm. It 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 either way that it depends on you. For example, in um, there is one text, there is one story, when the when the the older people became a monk, they asked Buddha, what is the what is the duty in the temple? As the, in, in the religion, what is the duty in the religion? They, they, Buddha, Buddha said there are two main duties that you can do. So, if you are young and then you want to you 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 want to pre- you want to read, you want to study, you can go to study the text, read the you know Buddha teaching text. Mm-hmm. So, and if you are older person and then you want to practice mind, you go directly to mind. Mm. It it either way around. It depends on your decision. Yeah. Yes. So I want to ask you about this nirvana, this this state of mind. You said there above the people who are enlightened are above happiness and and unhappiness. Um. So what is kind of the the perspective of what the mind is. So, if somebody is enlightened in their, in their nirvana state, is that a state that is only reached while they're living and practicing as a human, or is this something? Is there some kind of um, transcendence that people get? You know, when they die, then they become. You know, they don't. They aren't humans uh, anymore. Actually, the 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 word nirvana mm. used with Buddha. Uh, or and uh, and people who get enlightened when they die, we call they they go they go nirvana. Mm. Okay, during a human being, if they get enlightened, we we call that person is enlightened person. So you can be enlightened person, and then when you die, we call that person. They go to nirvana, mean they don't come back. Mm. So this is the the the, the sense of the term. Yeah. So what happens if they don't? So in Buddhism, there's a, this idea of reincarnation. Yes. That when you die, you come back. Um, when you go to nirvana, what is what is that like? Uh, is it a place? I, I, Are you? Yeah, it, it's not a place. And also, nobody know. Even Buddha said that you nobody know until you yourself hmm. get enlightened and then you die and then you will know. Mm. So this is the, his explanation. Even though he also give the the explanation and the word is like liberate, mm. you know, peaceful. So 
So this is I I I cannot understand too. Mm. Yeah. So how do you think he came up with the the theory of nirvana? So why, if if, I, if we were to say, why do we believe that nirvana is where you go when you die after you're enlightened, but it's not something we can understand until we die? How do, how do you think he came up with that that knowledge? You know, it's it's a, it's a kind of abstract idea mm. or perspective uh, over nirvana. Uh, so that's why, um, as I told you, that uh, you need to reach Nirvana and then uh, re- get enlightened and then go to Nirvana and then you will know what will happen. Mm. And also, people who who get enlightened also, um, uh, when 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 the Buddha die, uh, he he passes away. There there also one monk who go along with the process that Nirvana went. This is state of mind too. Mm. When he die, he passed different kind of. Uh, my factor, mental factor that he go along hmm. and those monks also come along with him and then he came back. Hmm. So it's, I think it's about um, the state of mind that those minds no produce. So when actually we, we produce, uh, our, our mind produce every time. So uh, we die and born every time our mind according to what we see, uh, what we what we touch or something like that. Mm. Yeah. So uh, when we still have the feeling, the emotion, or we are a person who, who have hatred or desire, greedy or something like that, we still have condition to uh, reincarnate or rebirth again. Mm. It's like a reproduce, our mind reproduce every time when we hear something, we, we feel something and then reproduce mm. it's like again and again something like that it it die and born and die and born something like that so you said earlier that the mind and the body aren't necessarily separated right it's possible to separate mind and body oh. in the higher meditation mm. oh. so yeah in higher meditation so okay when we talk about happiness mm. or suffering we have two main kind as 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 human that we that we can observe, for example, uh, body suffering and mind suffering. So, teacher, some teacher said, okay, you can you can suffer with your body, but your mind still content. Mm-hmm. You can suffer with your body as well as your mind suffer. You can suffer just only body, but your mind content. So you can rebel, liberate yourself. Mm. So. It's a matter of practice too, not just only you know, you know you can separate or something like that. This is a kind of uh, practice and meditation, and when you go into a higher level of meditation, you know you can get those kind of thing. You mm. can you can endure with suffer. You don't you don't you accept it. You accept your suffer. Mm. You don't try to resist your suffer. You said, why you 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 don't you don't say to yourself that okay why me. Why I'm so suffer? Mm. We can say that okay, as a human being, we can suffer. We can happy. We can be happy. So if we do our mind something like it, okay, we can let it go. Mm. So we accept it. Mm. When you accept it, your mind still okay. Even our body is my my body. Our body is is suffer. Okay, I I don't I don't mind. Mm. Because it can it can happen and also mm. the happiness uh, we can acquire happiness through um, sens- uh, a sen- sensual pleasure mm-hmm. you know sensual you touch you get something you drink water it's content or you satisfy what 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 you did or this is the or also one kind of happy through sense so but this kind of happiness can can lead into either way. Okay, if you, if if it's good, or if if we satisfy, we are happy. So mm. we, if we don't, we are unhappy. This is, it can either way. Mm. So it's not it's not the ultimate happiness. So we 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 have a higher meditation or or higher happiness through our mind. Mm. Some people who meditate, when they experience happiness. Through meditation, they don't 
they don't need those kind of happiness. For example, I do, they don't need car, they don't need soft, soft math or those kind of things because of they have the 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 higher happiness than that. Mm. So we nowadays we 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 stick on just happiness that through uh, sensual happiness, but the, there there is also happiness higher than that. For example, if you if you if you succeed in something, you 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 can also happy, mm-hmm. even though you don't you don't touch it, you know. So that kind of state can achieve through meditation too. Hmm. When when you are when you meditate, and then you overcome some kind of suffer. For example, okay, now I'm so suffer, and then you want you want to say that okay, I want to fight again with those suffer with your mind. Okay, I don't want to stop practice. I want to go. I move to. I want to move forward. So when you pass the state, and then, wow, this is, I can do that. Even though this is very painful, very suffer, you can go over. You can you can pass it. So and hmm. then you feel, wow, this is happiness. Hmm. So and then you know you 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 pass the state of meditation more and more. And sometimes when you struck, for example, meditation also can lead you into bad side of meditation too. For example, it can you 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 might see very beautiful girl, or you might see Buddha, or you might see something that come along to you. You might go to the heaven, you might go to the hell. Hmm. If you don't need, if you don't have teacher, you might come along with wow. Now I get enlightened. Hmm. But some teachers said that that your mind try to trick you. <laughs> yes, try to trick you. You need to you need to go out of that one, you know. So that's why, in a higher level of meditation, we need teacher who pass that stage. Sometimes you might see yourself before you, and then you feel like, wow, this is me, that's me, and then you try to touch yourself. So you don't pass the test, something like that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I've got a couple more questions for you. It seems like what is totally central to what you're talking about is the mind, is training the mind, being aware of what the mind is, what it's doing, how it's tricking you, how you can use it to overcome suffering. Yes. Yeah. Question I've been struggling with for. Many years now is what is the mind. Mm. So if it's possible, if this reincarnation thing happens, then it implies there's some kind of difference between mind and body. That when the body dies, the mind is still there, and then it goes to another body or gets rebirthed, something like that. So can you help me understand what that is? What is a mind? It's a really, really difficult question. <laughs> Uh, I also, I also just thinking, what is the mind now? Right. Um, I I have to say that I I completely don't don't go through what mind is. Mm. But in Buddhism, there are different minds. My, for example, uh, some teachers say that okay, there are one hundred twenty one mind. Mm. Bad and good. Altogether, there is one hundred twenty-one my. Hmm. So when they say something like that, we can infer that my is something that you feel right now. Hmm. This is my. Hmm. Whatever you see, and then you come up with you, and then you feel, oh, I'm angry now. This is my. Uh, you you drink water, and then wow, I feel fresh. This is also my. Whatever come up to you is mine. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. But there's so there's one step behind that. Then, if we're saying what the what the mind is is feelings, kind of. Yeah. There's still there's an there's an awareness of the feelings. Mm. So what is that awareness that observes what the mind is doing? Yeah. This is knowing. <laughs> this is knowing. Okay. So and and also I I still asking myself what is that? Mm-hmm. When okay, so when you are angry 
or when you feel something and then there is something, oh, now I am angry. When the, the problem is that when you, when you know that you are angry, the anger turn the shape. You are not angry anymore. Hmm. You turn into, wow, now I know that I'm angry. Hmm. You are knowing it. It's still mine. Hmm. So when you are aware, so you have the state of being angry, and then you have knowing that you're angry, yes. which is a different state. Yes. But what about the knowing that you know that you're angry? Isn't there one? It, there's still that. When you know that you are angry, yeah. angry disappear or still there? Um, it would be different. Yeah. Yeah. So. Your mind change the shape, hmm. so in two different shapes. So it's like you know, it go and then change, and then you know it change, and you know it's come. Hmm. But when you know that, it's good mind, the mind that will. We accept that it, it's it. You you turn your mind into different shape. It's still mind. Hmm. Okay, so maybe maybe this is what I'm getting at. Yeah. When we're talking about the mind in that way, there still there seems to be a person behind all of this. So yeah. it's it's my feelings, it's my thoughts, it's my mind. It's, mm. There's there's this internal me being aware of all of these things. Maybe that's the self. Maybe whatever whatever that is. Concentration. It it's. It's like a like a, my person my oh. personal identity or something. Like my name is Steve Patterson. Mm -hmm. That person is the one that's thinking the thoughts, is having the emotions, is feeling the the things. What is that? Mm -hmm. The person. Actually, according to Buddhist methodology, uh, you know, um, there is no no self. Even though some 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 uh, scholar try to discuss about if Buddha said that there is no self. He might, he might, it might, might be something opposite with self, hmm. opposite with non-self itself. Hmm. But, so when we talk about what is knowing, what we are doing, yeah, it might, it might have something. Don't you think that what you know is the same with angry? It's just one kind of feeling. It could be. You know what you know. You know what you are doing. And when you know what you are doing, it change that shape. You don't feel, you know, okay, this is angry here, and then now you are angry with like 10 seconds or 10 or 1 minute, and then now, wow, now I'm, I, I'm, I'm angry. So suddenly that you know it, you are angry. So the shape of your angry changed. Hmm. So it's still the same mind, but different shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But even if, so, if we say the Buddha said there was no self, mm. who's the Buddha? Doesn't that imply that that's still he has this, a self? Uh, when 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 we talk about self, um, uh, he asks us if you say self. Mm. Uh, okay, for example, Buddha. Um, what is Buddha? I don't know. Yeah. So, <laughs> for example, he he tried to explain that uh, that everything is suffering impermanent in non-self. Uh, for example, some uh, they, they they take the car. So if you say the car, okay, and then I take the wheel off, it's still the car. Now it become wheel. And then if I take the element of the wheel into into separate element. Mm. And until the smallest element, where itself, at the end, hmm. there's nothing there. Even my friend, who practiced meditation over eight hours, he tried. Even though a teacher recommended not practice meditation more than 50 minutes, because it might have the wrong, it might have a, um, what is that, uh, the the bad effect on our body and mind too. Hmm. So. But my friend want to know what what happened if we if he practiced meditation uh, more than eight hours, so he he suffer. So uh, the first hour 
uh, 30 minutes is not, nothing there, and then 40, you feel a little bit, um, you know, suffer with, you know, your, your leg, and, and then, and more and more, you, you suffer, suffer and a lot, and then your mind tells you that, okay, now I want to stop, mm-hmm. now I want to stop, but you decided that, okay, no, I don't want to, so before that you think, no, you think that I want to stop, and then you say that I don't want, this is, this is not the same time, different time, mm. not the same mind, different mind, it, it born and die, and born and die, born and die, something like this, mm. so, and then you feel that, okay, when, uh, th- through the time, mm. okay, ask him, what is the benefit of meditation with pain? He said, okay, I want to know what is, how, how when, when, I, when I commit, when, when, when he overcome his, uh, when he, he can do with uh, his oath, he said, okay, I want to meditate an hour. I want to do it. I have a long time to go. Also, during your walk, you might get pain. So, he said that there is nothing behind pain. There's nothing behind pain. What does that mean? Mean, you learn to accept the pain. I asked him, what do you do with the pain? He said that, I cannot do anything. I cannot force the pain to stop. Mm. He, just, he just said, okay, when the pain that, that increased so much, I cannot bear it. I just, okay, I don't care about you. I don't care about you. I just let, it, I, I let, I let you go. I just come back to, to bearing and bearing out. Mm. So, oh, okay, when you come with bearing in and bearing out, what happened to you? I forget the pain. Hmm. And then, when he stopped meditation, he, he, he realized that, wow, even though I feel very painful, he's still pain. But when the meditation is, you know, his con- concentration increase, we call concentration increase. Your concentration, your mind, stronger than the pain that your body has. Hmm. You overcome that. Hmm. You don't feel that. Hmm. Even you forget your pain. So at the end, you accept that, okay, there is nothing behind the pain. But pain is with you. You accept that. Hmm. This is a matter of acceptance. So, last question I want to ask you. This is that's fascinating, and yeah. I feel like I want to experience that kind of mental strength. Okay. You said this really interesting thing. You said the it's a different mind. That when he started the meditation, there was one mind that had certain feelings and beliefs, yeah. and then an hour, a couple hours in, it's a different mind. Different mind. That is true. Maybe the way that I would put it is a different state of mind, but it still seems like it's the same person. Mm. So it is the, it's the same person experiencing two different states of their own mind, mm. right? Yes. But if that's true, maybe the mind is something that's not permanent, but there still seems to be that person. There still seems to be a self. It still seems like in that circumstance it was him experiencing these two States. Do you think that's not a correct way of thinking about it? Yes, not correct way of thinking about it. If we say self, mm. we, if we say self means not changing. So, if it's not changing, means you can control it. So, if, for example, if you, if, if you are not happy now, so you, you can force yourself now, stop, stop. But you cannot do it. If you say stop, stop, it's increasing, increasing. Because of this is nature of mind. It's, you can get resistant. So the way to do is that because of our mind is changing, changing, it, everything is changing. So if this is the right view to look at everything, when it's changing, you can control, you accept it. Hmm. If you say that itself means you want to control, you want to, you want to control, you want to, you want to mend it. You stop. So if you think like that, you can be unhappy. Mm. You can, you can, uh, you can, you can kind of uh, give birth of another kind of suffering. Instead of okay, you accept that okay, when it change, even though happening, okay, 
it changes. You can't control it. So would you say that because the self seems to be changing, it's not really a thing, not like a permanent thing? Mm. If you think that self, permanent thing, mm. so for example, my mother will, will be with me forever. What happened if she die? In reality, she will die one day. Mm-hmm. So, um, I think at the end, neither has self, either self or not self. If you accept the reality, it's okay. Mm. Yeah. If people think has self or non self, if people say that okay, oh, I. I believe in non-self, but still, they're still clinging on something. <laughs> For example, if uh, if something lost or something died or, or you know, beloved one dies, so they're still, you know, painful with that, and then they cannot, they cannot go, they cannot uh, move forward. They just, you know, they just keep their mind still, oh, my mother is still here with me. She's still here. She don't die. She don't die. She just, that person just still, you know, ignore the, the, the fact, mm-hmm. ignore the reality. So, you know, but could you say that while that person is living, there's still a there's still a self until there isn't at some point, or is it that at every moment no. it's changing? Every moment changing. Hmm. Looking at our mind, it's changing. Even though um, we we have we 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 come up with self. This is the wrong thought. Hmm. This is not right view, not right thought. In you know, as at full path that. That the first one is right view, right thought, should come first. If we say that, okay, we have self, if you think like that, it causes another path. Mm. If you think that, okay, there is no self, it's no self, it's changing, you can, you can go another path. Mm. So, we, we are what we think. So, the, the way to go. Okay, so let's say I agree that thinking there's a self leads towards some kind of suffering. That doesn't necessarily mean it's not true, right? So it might be the case that we do have selves, and because of that, there's necessarily going to be suffering until we die. Mm. What do you think about that idea? Do you think that the, the end goal of the Buddhism to overcome suffering is maybe more important than whether or not there is actually such a thing as the self. So it's something we might tell ourselves. Yeah, so the, okay, there is self, so that's why you should not worry about things. <laughs> okay, for, for example, right? So, so it, put it this way. If you believe, if you're attached to the self, it causes suffering. So don't be attached to the self, even though in reality there might be such a thing. Okay. What do you think? Is, is that kind of the position? Is this, are, you, are you making a claim that in reality there truly is no self? Or are you saying that if you believe there is a self, then it causes suffering? Mm. Very difficult to, 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 to do judgment on this kind of two. But um, I think uh, what, what, what leads us into, into suffering? So if you think that okay, if you think like that, and then you you are not ha- you 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 are happy, you you get away from you you have away from some suffering because of you you tell yourself something like that. Okay. Mm. Uh, if there is some people who can do that, is there any per- person who can do that? Like okay, now I we have selves, and you know we tell you know, for example, they might have they have some some power. That can help us to show you. You are safe. You are. You are. You. Whatever happening, I will take care of you, or something like that. Mm. I guess. I guess maybe a simpler way to, for me to ask is, if there were a choice between understanding the true nature of what exists mm. and being free from suffering. Mm. Is the Buddhist position to say, even if we're tricking ourselves or even if we're deceiving ourselves to say there isn't a self, we're doing that because it results in us overcoming our suffering. So, 
So it's almost like if I lie to myself and, and tell myself that there isn't a self, then I, I'm happier and therefore that makes it okay. Mm -hmm. Or is the claim that in reality, the truth of the matter is, regardless of how it affects our suffering, there is no such thing as a self. Does that make sense? Uh, there's no self, or... It, when you say there's no self, is that because that's a, a true claim, that there is no such thing, or yeah, is it because... Yeah, true claim, true claim that there's no life for that. Um, we don't we don't say because of to make us to make ourselves have happier right because of when we look at everything they, they give a def definition too why there is no self not because of we try to convince ourselves right. uh, to be happy right but there is explanation that I told you that okay for example feeling for example um, object thing that you see, if you say self, or for example, self means I, I mean um, this is appearance, okay, mm. what about I take the skin off, what about I get into the bone and you know, you distinguish bone off, where is self, where is bone, this is just only the word that we, that we come up with, mm. so at the end, there is no such a thing. So do you think it's when I, when I am talking about a self, when we're talking about okay. a self, do you think we're just making that up? Do you think it's a trick that our mind is playing? Because it seems like I'm a self. It seems like I'm a person, like, a, like a, I have a point of view, I have a perspective, I have a name, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why, that, why is that going on if there's no such thing? Because we, we build it up. We build it up. But we wouldn't. We we, we build it up. Mean, uh, as a s human social, human society, we build history. We build Thailand. We build England. We build America. We build the world. We build the world. And then you know we put the label into into you, into me, into this is Thai, this is Hmong. But at the end. There's no mom, there's no you, there's nothing. But there's no, there's not, there's not something. There's got to be something, right? Yeah, you want to be something. Well, but I mean, there you has want to, to be. We want to be something. <laughs> we want to be something. So when we say we want to be something, so now we create something. Hmm. So we want to do something, to want something, to get what we want. So when we, when we do that, it affects your life. For example, I want to get rich, but I don't know how. I just go to you and then I take money from you. Hmm. So, so you, you are unhappy or I'm, I'm, I can be happier, but still, I still feel unhappy with, with what I did. Hmm. This is, we try to do it. When we say what I, I want, so we don't accept reality. Reality, okay. Well, we, we try to, to accept reality as a human being, okay? We are going to die. Don't forget that we are going to die. So, um, we, we can be healthy. We cannot, we can be unhealthy. So, if we think like this, so, we can accept the reality. This is the reality. If we accept the reality, we can live with reality. Mm. If we try to resist the reality, for example, the, the water, the river, you know, flowing, you try to block the water. Oh, I, I don't want water. I don't want water because water can, you know, can flood my, my, my field or can flood my, my, my liver. Okay, I want to take water away. So, water is a part of the world. You cannot stop it. Mm. So, you can live with the water. Water, water is water, you know, but there is a place that you can stay, you know, apart from water. So, this is a kind of mind too. Our mind is working. If you want to stop, it, you can get resistant. So, the way to do is that you can guide the mind. So, when you say that though, <coughs> there's still something. I mean, when you say the water is water, that means there is water, right? So, there, there has to be some kind of reality. No, 
Water is not water. <laughs> well, I don't know how to. You make... know, when you boil water, it changes into something else. So there's n- there's nothing. There's nothing, non-self. That's hard for me to understand. How there's. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I try to understand too, but it convinced me a lot. When I I I said okay, when I think like this, I I I I feel released. Mm. For example, I can I can let my house without clinging on. Okay, okay, so they they can we 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 tr- we trust each other. We trust. Um, when we understand, we okay we can okay until we die. Um, you know we can we can we cannot. Uh, Be suffer long, very long time. Mm. So when we understand, for example, uh, if I if we go to some person who who we we don't know we don't know the cause of that. Okay, for example, I I read one 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 book that's very interesting. That he said that okay, this one man, he 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 get into the subway in, in the underground, and then he came along with. Uh, His two children, and um, you know those, he he don't he don't control his children. He just you know let them running around, you know playing with other people. Just you know you know anger on him, angry on him. That yeah. why don't you take care of your children? Yeah. Why you let them play? So and then, and one man came came up came up to him and then talked to him like. Okay, why don't you take care of that? That man said that okay, I don't know how to how to tell them that their mother passes away. Yeah. So and when you understand reality of him, you are feeling changed from angry into wow. Now I have a sympathy on him. Yeah. So this is my, you know, sometimes. To to know reality, accept their reality, can turn violent into you know peaceful or you know better life too. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's a really great note to end on. I really appreciate this conversation. This has been great. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending your time here too. All right, that was my conversation with Pramaha Shanam Komprankai. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I certainly learned a lot, as I said at the beginning of this episode. Since doing these interviews, I myself have started meditating, and I love it. It's actually something that I only been doing it 10 or 15 minutes a day. I've seen benefits, and I pretty much look forward to it every day. Now, as for the philosophy of Buddhism and the non-existence of the self, well, I have my own thoughts, but I'll wait to share them at length when I do an interview breakdown of this episode. So that's all for me today. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week.